Hey Stampers, Skinner again. Uh, I've been having a look through uh, over the past few days, been looking at inspirational videos of other people and I came across one Jan B did and it's absolutely stunning. And she called it a front step card. Uh, I call it a little box card but uh, it's that it does stand up. My pad is uneven. There you go, it does stand up on its own. And Jan did totally different front than me but I wanted to show off this gorgeous gorgeous butterfly and this I do you know what? I've been watching videos of people with this and again I didn't know I had it <laughs> aren't I awful I still got some bits in but uh I came across it on my shelf and I thought oh I've got it I didn't realise I had it I tell you the truth I used the little flower from the abstract expressions and I've used a sentiment from the other one I've only used the flower and the butterfly from this set. Oh no, yeah. Is it the flower and the butterfly that come with this set? Yeah. And beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'll move my flower down there. But this, these come with this set. So I used the flower and the butterfly. And as you can see, I've got these three beautiful flowers there. And I didn't realise I owned this. But I've put, oh darling, you are fabulous and I love it. But the only thing is, oh, that's the framework. That's that, that comes in there. I have pre-cut them out because uh, there's that sentiment. It's just beautiful. Some gorgeous details in this. Lovely friend, uh, darling friend, darling lovely friend, best wishes, thank you. Lovely crisscrosses just gorgeous and I didn't realize I had it um, I've used the gardens impressions designer series paper I think this is beautiful and I've used this one and this one just stunning because I wanted this box at the front to be a little bit more different than the back thing is when I come to cut this piece I cut it the wrong way and it come out that way so I've turned it over so there's a little bit of more contrast the card does fit inside a standard size envelope so this is my envelope and this will fold flat this way so the recipient just about but there's still a little bit of space down the bottom but yes it does go inside a normal envelope love the very fact that it stands up when it wants to not play up Whoops, but it does. <laughs> so let's get one made. <laughs> You're going to need some, I'm using the Whisper White, they're very thick. You're going to need one piece which is four and an eight. And I believe that is, I'm going to try and do metric. I don't do metric, but I'm going to try my best. That is 10 point, let me get that right. 10.5 so don't ask me now because my ruler's uh, gone short <laughs> and this is 10 and 3 quarter inches so it's 4 and 8 by 10 and 3 quarters and it's 10.5 by 27.3 and this piece you're going to need is 6 and a half by 2 and 5 eighths and that works out 2 and 5 eighths is 6.7 by 16.4 so oh, I've wrapped them on the, on the backs so these are the two main pieces you're going to need for your card and now for your I've cu already cut out the butterfly the three flowers out of the designer series paper and the piece you need for that is about one and an eighth by about three and a half, maybe three and three quarters, just to get those three flowers out. And I've, uh, I'm going to, I might use my Stamparatus actually, because I stamped this with the block and it didn't come out dark enough. So I ended up going over my other one with the black marker pen, but it's faded here. And I would like to get a bit more ink on that. So I might, I might pull out my Stamparatus. Yay, another one for the Stamparatus and I'm going to just stamp it on that label so I'm only going to need the one plate I'm 
think they'll do that now. We'll do that now so I can pop it to one side. So I'm going to push that up in the corner. I want that smack bang in the centre. That looks straight. I'm going to pick up this. Oh, I don't think I need the sponge inside. You can only use that one way, so oh, I've only got one chance at this. So, right up into the top corner. Let me grab a, a magnet. There you go. As you do. Oh, I've got the other plate there. I'm going to push that right up. Just Oh, bloody, this is strong. Shavings. Oof. There we go. I'm going to clean that first because it, I think it might have just left a mark on my... bit of cardstock there. So I'm going to line that back up, actually. pretty straight at the bottom. Let me see if uh, it is. That looks pretty straight to me. Fingers crossed. Otherwise I'll have to cut another one out. So, it's best to do these things properly. But at least with this I can push that over, press it down. And see, it's not dark enough, but I couldn't do that with the block. I can with the stamparatus, and it's going to be in the same place the whole time. It's still not dark enough for me. It needs a little bit of help in this corner. That's a lot better, nicer, cleaner and crisper. And I'm so glad it was worth getting the Stamparatus out just for that. That is fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And that's all the stamping there is. But well worth getting that out just for this. And now I've got to try it. Oh, God, that is really, really strong magnet. And I mean strong. Look how, that's a lot better. Look, oh crikey. Pop that away. I keep my instructions in there, under there, just to give it an extra shin for when I'm using photopolymer. So, I can pop that away later. So, that's my gorgeous sentiment stamped. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Lovely detail. So I can pop my block back. I got OCDs kicking off. Can have a swig of my brew now. Stop sweating. Huh? Right, let's get back to our card pieces. I've told you the, the whisper white now. We have your. I'm going to go with the layers and the DSP, which I've added already to save time. So the layer is four by five and five eighths, and the DSP is three and seven eighths by five and a half, and in centimeters that's ten point two by fourteen point two for the layer, and the DSP is ten by fourteen. And with this being a directional paper, this is why you have to be careful about the way you cut your card. You're going to need another one at two and a half by four and five eighths for the layer. The DSP is two and three eighths by four and a half which is 11.7 by 6.5. The layer and the DSP is 11.5 by 6.2. This one is 4 by 1 and 7 eighths for the layer. And it, the DSP is 3 and 7 eighths by 4 and 1 and 3 quarters, which is 10.2 by 4.8 and 10 by 4.5. This one is 4 by 1 and 1 eighth, 
and the DSP is 3 and 7 eighths by 1 which is 10.2 by 2.8 and 10 by 2.5 and this is 2.5 by 1 and an eighth and the DSP is 2 and 3 eighths by 1 so it's 6.4 times 2.8 and, and the DSP is 6.1 by 2.5 Yay! Don't ask me to do that on every single video. <laughs> I just sat and measured it while my darling husband came in and made me a cup of coffee. So I'm going to set them to one side. I'm going to grab our trimmer. And we're going to do some scoring. So, I don't know why I've got that out. On the long side, you're going to score at, make sure it's pushed right up. We're going to score this at half inch, one and three quarters. Whoops, that slipped off there. Three and three quarters, and five. So that's that one. Don't ask me what they are in metric. Oh, please don't, because I can't, I don't know. <laughs> and this one, you're gonna score this at half an inch and one and three quarters. And that's it. Oh my word. So pop that back. we're going to carefully burnish our score lines, making sure they meet right up against each other. And the same with this piece. And while we're here, I'm just going to add tear and tape. With it being a moving card, it folds flat and then stands up. It doesn't do a lot of moving, but you want really good tape. And it's sticking to my fingers. I'm going to squish that down, set that to one side, and then we're going to do these as well. So I will start with the farthest away, so making sure that it's lined up perfect and burnish. And then we're just going to come back until we've done the other, making sure it's perfectly lined up. And again with this one. And this one. Yes, making sure it's bang. So this is gonna come up and be adhered on there. So we need our turn tape along here as well. I love sitting and watching Jan. She has got the most calming voice, bless her. She comes up with some fabulous, fabulous card ideas. I think she said she had this from a magazine. And I must admit, I have seen cards done like this before. But Jan was my inspiration for this one. So now, because this is going to come up and stand like that when it's nice and square, we need to add our designer series paper here, here and here first. So this is my long panel. This is going right here. I suppose you could argue you could cut this off because you're not going to see all that but you will when the card is standing to the side so that is why we add DSP all the way down so I'm going to get my Tombow and I thought what go you're not going to see that right in so Don't go sticking this upside down because you've you got a direction, so. Nice little white border all the way round. She 
use your bone folder. And I think it's a lot easier to add to your paper now than later, so. So this is a direction and the leaves are going upwards. Now this is going to sit on top of my box there. And this is the one, like I'm saying, I cut the paper but the flowers are running this way so I just turned it over instead of wasting another piece of designer series paper. So frugal it is all the way. Why waste when you don't need it? You can just flip. <laughs> Double sided so use both sides. And not only that, you don't want the whole thing. You need to uh, break that up a little bit, I think. So, grab my bone folder. Love this card. And like Jan said, there's a knack to getting this piece glued down because you don't want nothing on the wonk otherwise it won't stand up and it won't look right so what you're going to do you don't need to bend this up and then stick that because you're just not going to get anything you're going to fold this back you're gonna, and then you're going to line that up perfectly and then when it does sit up You've got it in the perfect place. So what I'm going to do is grab my piercing tool. I'm going to carefully peel back this. This device is on the move. You're going to tuck this right in. And you're going to keep that as flat as possible. Lining that up. And then press. And use your bone folder. So press that down and then there's your perfect little, the only thing is my desk isn't straight, my pad is not uneven so it will stay up once, uh, there we go, way, fingers crossed it's going to go way uh, when the card is on. So what we're going to do, we're going to add our designer series paper because this is the top and this is going to get attached right down there and then all that's going to get attached to there oh there's a lot of attaching but I'm sure you didn't want to see me sit there gluing all that designer series paper on this is the direction of our card this way I've chose this pattern because it doesn't really particularly run in any way, shape or form. Because it could it could be that way, it could be that way, it doesn't really make any odds. I'm choosing because I'm looking at the, the, the leaves going up that way, which they are there too. And I'm going to attach this piece right on there, perfectly. Oh, and I'm glad I'm using Tombow. And I do like fun fold cards and funny opening cards. Not funny, but, you know, different ways of opening them. I like the twist and pop cards. I haven't done one of them for ages. I might do another one of them, actually, in a couple of weeks' time. I did one, I think it was Christmas cards. So I'm going to flip this over now and I've got to put a little bit more tear and tape on the bottom here because this is going at the bottom of this card. Get as close to that edge as possible. Love this stuff. Gonna squash that down. Oops, I'm putting that in the wrong uh, pot. So I'm gonna pop this away. Don't think I need it for anything because we're gonna attach with dimensionals. So now I'm gonna peel this back and we're 
we're going to lay this flat and you're going to try your best to keep this so let me just check my distance it is four and one eighth so this is two and three quarters no, two and five eighths actually that is one, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So I need that to be one. One, two, three, four, five. No. Oh, I'm just, I'm just going to eyeball. So you need this right on the edge, not over, otherwise it won't stand up. Check the distance either side. I'm just going to stick that down. Again. And before I attach it at the top, I can test this. There we go, perfect. So again, we're going to fold this flat. We're going to remove our back end. I'm going to stick that right down there so it all stands up together. Oh my word. I've done a better job this time. Thank you for your very clear instructions, Jan. Are you an angel? So I'm going to pop it close, hold it back, and then just lay it flat. Then our card is... Whoops. It's, do you know, if I stand it over here, it stands up perfectly every time. It's just that my desk is a little bit wonkified. There we go. It's done. Yay. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? And I think I got good distance between the two. Isn't that paper absolutely gorgeous? So as with this one, I have, I had a dimensional at the back of each of those flowers, the mini ones. Because I was gifted some little flower gems and I'm going to pop them as the centre of my other flowers. Let me just grab my scissors and this cake tree off. Because I don't want it crinkling. So there's my three little flowers. Pop that back in there now. Grab my mini dimensionals. This will also help to adhere those little gems down, even though they are self adhesive backed. Don't press too hard when it's on your pad. Your little mini dimensionals fit in there beautifully. my little pot in. Oh, it would help if I attached my words first. So you could swap this up and have that there and your big butterfly up there. But I preferred it. I'm going to just come down slightly so my flowers sit along the top. And I make sure that my card will close and go in an envelope. Look at me, I'm doing that again now and I haven't attached this. So I'm going to fetch big dimensionals for this. And I'm just going to, I'm going and leave, a, no, I'm just going to put two along the top. And I'm going to have two down the bottom. I'm not going to bang into the corners because of the width. centralize this up perfect 
perfect, absolutely perfect. Isn't that gorgeous? So where's my sticky one? There. <laughs> So I'm just going to pull this down slightly a bit more. I know you can see the dimensional through it. But when I add this beautiful little flower. You won't see it now. Isn't that beautiful? I could actually attach these. Isn't that Oops. <laughs> that, I know where it is. I can see it. It went AWOL, and my poker tool is your best friend when it comes to gems. <laughs> Did you see it fling off? <laughs> mm. Oh, can't beat a cup of coffee. So, peel off the back ends. Whoops. And I had one either side. And one beautiful flowers. That's better. Love it. So I'm just going to bend the wing slightly. I don't need to add any gems to the front of here because it's just beautiful enough as it is. So I'm going to grab some more dimensionals. And I do have a half one I think somewhere. No, so I'm going to grab a little slither off the end and I'm going to cut that piece in half. We don't waste anything, we're very frugal. Is that going to be long? It's in that round actually. And look at that, it's got perfect a size. Love it. To pop my, I need to get some more dimensionals out. You could add some little gold thread. I think it would get lost on this card a little bit, but you could add a ribbon somewhere. I'm going to angle this spot of light this way. Just tilt the wings a bit. Oh my gosh, so there's the one we just done together. They look like pairs of cards, don't they? So they're pointing in different directions. How's that? This is the one we've just done. This is the one I did earlier. I think they're absolutely superb. They do sit up when you've got a straight desk, trust me. It will stand up, trust me. You've just seen it stand up twice. They do stand up. I need a flat surface. But there you have it, inspired by the lovely Jan B. Thank you for that, Jan. You're a little superstar. And they, like I say, they do fold flat to go in a normal size envelope. Perfect. Space top and bottom. Yay! So I'm going to get this stamped on the back now. Ready to go in the charity box for the diabetes challenge, which I will be setting in the next two weeks. So, because these are going to get sold on and they have those images, there we go. So, that is the one we've just done. Oh, please stand up. There you go. It does stand up. <laughs> and this is the one I did earlier. So, thanks for watching. Please stop by again and press the subscribe button in the corner if you haven't already. That would be absolutely divine. I will, uh, I do tend to post the cards every single day. So, if you'd like to press the subscribe button as well, at the little bell button, you will get notified of all future videos. Look at me prepping everything. These all go to charity. I never sell my cards. 
if you want one you can have one but it will be free I don't sell them but isn't that absolutely gorgeous ready packed to go away for the charity so thank you for watching thank you for stopping by and I will see you next time take care bye